Well, I was born and I grew up here in Oslo. Uh, my father was an uh, executive, so he worked long days. Uh, my mother, uh, she stayed home with us for the first years, but uh, then she went back to her job as a librarian. And uh, I had two brothers, uh, a younger brother and uh, an older brother. Uh, and I had a, you know, really nice childhood. Uh, my only uh, sorrow was when we moved from Oslo to the West Coast to, uh, to Molde. Uh, although it was nice because my, my uh, grandparents on both sides lived there. Uh, but I really, you know, I really felt lonely the first years in Molde because I longed back to my friends here in uh, Oslo. I just loved Oslo. And um, uh, I guess I spent, the, you know, the first couple of years in Molde, I spent a lot of time alone. And uh, uh, I don't know, but maybe uh, when you spend time alone, uh, you have time to come up with stories and you make stories because uh, uh, the life that you live in your head is better and you have more friends there than you have in real life. Um, but then later on, I, uh, I, uh, I found friends, of course, in uh, Molde. And I started playing soccer, which uh, uh, was what I did up until I was uh, 19 um, and I was sure uh, that, I, that I was destined to, to become a professional football player uh, playing for Tottenham in, the, in England. That was sort of my goal and um, I, uh, I played for um, a Premier League team in, uh, in Norway and um, but then I was injured when I was 19. Uh, and I uh, broke the ligaments in both knees and uh, so I knew that uh, a soccer career was more or less out of the question. Um, so I had to rethink what I wanted to do with my life and um, I went on to, to study economics uh, in uh, Bergen and uh, there I also started playing in the band. All my friends in Molde they played in bands. I didn't play in uh, anything but I wrote lyrics for them uh, so I had discovered sort of my my uh, storytelling abilities um, and um, I started playing in the band um, as a student and after having studied in Bergen for four years I moved finally to my beloved Oslo and uh, where I stayed for the rest of my life and um, there I worked as a stockbroker uh, while playing with my band and uh, finally my band uh, uh, got a, a, a record uh, contract so we recorded four albums and had a uh, uh, big success especially with a couple of the albums uh, uh, not the first one <laughs> Nobody bought the first album, but then with the second uh, album, we had a big, uh, great breakthrough, and um, and I worked, but I I, I kept on working as, as as a stockbroker. It was a bit strange, you know, because the rest of the band, they were only playing with the band, and we were playing all the time, and very few people knew that. I mean, since I was, you know, the the, the singer, the guitar player, and the songwriter of the band, you would think that I would be a full-time musician. But I was the only one who was working uh, besides uh, playing. Um, and I think the reason was that I somehow knew that I would never be a full-time musician. I didn't see myself as a musician. I saw myself first and foremost as a storyteller, and I used my songwriting for telling stories. Um, and then um, in uh, 97 my father had just died from cancer and he was only 72 when he died and I I knew that he had plans for what he wanted to do uh, and he wanted to write a book about uh, his experiences during the war uh, among other things and I realized that, okay, you can't postpone the things that you think are important, the things that you know you, that you have to do in life. Uh, and at that time, I had made enough money, so I didn't have to... I wasn't rich, but I made enough money, so I didn't have to worry about um, uh, anything. I, I could go 
without uh, getting paid for uh, for uh, for some years and so i decided okay i have to write my first novel and as soon as i started writing my first novel i knew that okay i have been waiting for this since i was around you know 18 or 19. Uh, all my friends had started to write their first novel at uh, that age we discussed uh, uh, literature and um, it was like uh, it was like waking up you know and finally start doing uh, the things that i knew i i had prepared to do for uh, for many many years and uh, as soon as i started writing i knew that okay this is what i will be doing for the rest of my life i don't know if i can make a living out of it uh, uh, you know uh, the chances that you can make a living out of writing are so small that you can't sort of decide to become a full-time writer but i knew that i would I would at least be a part-time writer and that my my main goal would be to uh, to to have something published and I was lucky because I was published on my first attempt and since then I've been so lucky that I've had the best job that you can have in this world uh, and that is to be a writer you know to 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 actually spend most of your day making up stories and uh, and uh, besides having people paying you to do that that's just you're so privileged and uh, I still wake up in the morning uh, and I have to pinch myself uh, and say that okay what you're going to do today is just what you love what you would do for free it's just to sit down and make up stories I have a daughter who lives with her uh, mother and the, tr the three of us we are uh, uh, the two of them are, are, are my best friends so we uh, we don't live together, but we live uh, very close to each other, and we uh, we travel together. And uh, I have most of my friends living here in, in Oslo. I have my two brothers living here in uh, Oslo. Um, so uh, I travel a lot, but Oslo is my base. It's it's my home city, and it's also the home city for my main character in the uh, Harry Holy series. Uh, so I, always, I will always come back to Oslo and I can't imagine myself moving uh, away from Oslo again. You know, uh, I moved from Oslo when I was eight years old. It took me a couple of years to get over that. Uh, I will never move again. But also because, uh, because Oslo is such a secure uh, base for me, it's very easy for me to, to, to travel and stay away for, for a couple of months at the other end of the world for that matter. Uh, and um, and to 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 be working there. Uh, sometimes I I just travel to cities I've never been to, and I stay there for a couple of months just writing, uh, and sometimes using the the city for my uh, for uh, for my stories. But 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 sometimes also just staying away from Oslo because Oslo, uh, as it is my home, is also a city where I um, where I'm very busy. Uh, there are so much things happening when I'm in Oslo, so sometimes I have to go away to to uh, to get work done. Um, and uh, uh, when I'm not working, because I'm working a lot, I'm still playing, uh, both with my band and uh, with a with a duo and trio uh, in a sort of a storytelling slash uh, music um, uh, setting. Uh, I. Uh, I like to to go bicycle riding. Uh, Oslo is a great city for uh, for doing that. I have a cabin just outside the city that I go to. Uh, I go uh, rock climbing, and Oslo is a great city for uh, rock climbing. Sometimes I also travel outside Oslo, and uh, each winter, uh, uh, me and uh, uh, now also my my uh, daughter, we travel to uh, to Thailand. There's a place there where you can go rock climbing, and we are going there this this winter also with her uh, cousins to go rock climbing um, and I just started playing tennis because uh, uh, I couldn't um, you know I, I, I can never fulfill my dream of becoming a professional football player so now I decided that okay so I have to be a professional tennis player so that is my aim now you know to someday play at Wimbledon uh, now of course you uh, I'll never play at Wimbledon but uh, uh, I, I found out that when I'm playing tennis, it's it's this feeling that you're impossible to beat. It's just to play perfect. 
you have to play perfect perfect is good enough to do anything and i know i'm a madman when i'm thinking that but I, and this is no joke i'm actually thinking that that i can beat nadal if i'm playing like i'm playing right now if i play like that all the time and it's the same thing when you're writing you're writing and you're writing two or three sentences and you look at them and you say that this is a great idea this is great writing i just have to keep on doing this for a couple of hundred pages and i'll be the greatest writer in the world i know i'm crazy but i think you in order to be a writer in order to sit all by yourself and write day in and day out um, you have to have this crazy idea that you're the best writer in the world and uh, you know there are moments when i am the greatest writer in the world there are also moments when i'm probably among the 10 worst writers in the world but uh, you have to tell yourself that okay um, if i can be the greatest writer in the world for 10 seconds i can be that for year in and year out.